I'm not ready to grow up. I mean, growing up means having to become what I've always known that I could be. And isn't that a little bit scary? It's one thing to make a vision board and think about what you'll become. And it's another thing to have the opportunity to actually do it. I got in. And over the past 10 months, I've been doing the work to actually become it. And it's been a long, long time coming. The journey has not been easy. It's taken a lot of support. But most importantly, it's taken the strength and courage to not walk out on myself and to walk right into my destiny. So let's do it together. Welcome to the diary of that girl. It's been crazy. As of right now, I'm still finishing up my last semester of school. We are about a month out from graduation. I'm literally so excited. Yesterday, I went to go pick up my cap and gown as well as my stole, and I'm just so excited. You're me a good so close, we're so close. I paid for graduation pictures. Oh let me my see, let me God! See. I was a serious mad woman preparing for this graduation photo shoot because I am a COVID graduate. I did not get to walk the stage when I graduated from high school and I also just didn't really feel like I got my coming out moment and so this was so important for me. My hair is all blow dry now and we're about to do the braid pattern for the sew-in. I'm so excited. I'm gonna just do a side part again and I just turned on equalizer on the TV. This has been such a great experience. She massaged my scalp, be conditioned, and we also did a trim. And my hair has grown a significant amount. I think this is obvious that this is cardboard. Um, yeah. The creative direction for my graduate photos were really editorial and I was missing a bouquet of flowers and in my inspo photos, mostly all of the graduates I looked at had a bouquet of flowers. I was running low on my budget so I ran to Big Lots and I got this faux bouquet of flowers, stuffed it into this other bouquet of pompous flowers and it turned out beautifully. Is it on the sink? It's like over by my makeup stuff, I threw it over there. Or it might Put your be face on the in the floor. camera. She's not even ready. <laughs> Although I was fashionably late, I will say I did serve the exact look that I had envisioned. And I was just so happy to be in that moment. It was just so surreal for me to kind of put into perspective that I had finished something so momentous. Like, I was going to be a graduate from The Ohio State University and not only was I graduating but I was going to be opening a new chapter in this crazy book that I get to call my life. And these have been such formative years for me. I have started several businesses. I started my digital stationery brand here. I started All Things Influence here. I started work at university here. I've started so many movements and embraced so many different communities whilst being a college student. And now is the time that I really have to start thinking about who it is that I wanna be in the world and not just on my campus. We just finished our final presentation for my strategic management class and we got a 20 out of 20 as soon as we finished she was like that was another 20 out of 20 presentation so that makes me very happy but now I have to promote an episode of That Girl Radio for this Wednesday we're doing another episode featuring another woman who is truly that girl she was the former beauty and style editor at Essence and now she is a uh, speaker, she's a host, she's all the things and I'm just so excited to share this episode with you guys because she talks about how to take your drafts um, and turn them into reality really and one of the most important quotes from the episode was her sentiments to just hit publish and I did an entire episode 
on that little snippet because I thought it was just such a huge message to send to young girls that you don't need to just keep drafting all of your ideas or drafting everything that you want to do. You need to just hit publish. Hit publish now and go back to the drawing board and perfect it later, but the world needs to consume your work. You guys want to see how type A I am? I'm going to show you real quick. So I normally have a whole document that I share with my guests and I normally just do their bio really quickly and then I have this as like a note to myself and I tell them once you hear your name and welcome to That Go Radio, that's when you're welcome to start speaking. But I always record this with them in the episode just so they get excited about, you know, being featured on something like this. So I'm just copying the pieces of her bio right now into my Instagram caption. So right now I have Are You Ready? And I just like to keep a flow that generally makes the most sense and builds anticipation. And because I like to cross promote with my guests, I like to ensure that it makes sense for their audience as well. Everything's spelled right. Former beauty and style editor, content creator, speaker and host. We have her, boom. Are you ready? Who's That Girl features women that are breaking the glass ceiling, building their own table, and rewriting the blueprint for success. I just posted. But it's so funny because I'm back in the vicinity. I literally sat at the chair out there and I conceptualized this whole idea. Literally at the end of February, I was planning for what I wanted to do for March for Women's History Month. And I was like, why not start doing Who's That Girl? Wednesday, weekly conversations or, you know, however frequent I could do it. Um, with women who are that girl in their respective industry and it's just a way for you to connect with more people have really dope conversations and broaden the conversation outside of your own experiences and give people more perspectives on what it's like to have to balance it all you know like balancing your dreams balancing your discipline balancing your your spirituality like all of those things are very important for young people to see and so I drafted that up I literally have the clips in a previous vlog and it's funny to see that she was one of the very people that I listed in my notes that I wanted to have on the podcast and literally right after I got back from my Richmond trip she in, accepted her invite and I did the the recording this past Friday and so to know that this is really happening is crazy and that's not the only content that I produce for episodes so for every episode I also like to create a paper this one is not complete I have to actually add in the the transcript from her episode that points to this but I pull out a really salient piece of information like Blake Newby's just hitting publish or whoever I'm talking to is doing this thing and then I talk about you know what they're saying here and that's another piece of content that we can collaborate on and then we have like notes to self and I thought this was kind of cool to have her signature on it like she signed off on what she said this is how far we've come we started here back in September and I had a big vision for what I wanted the podcast to look like and I honestly have been avoiding doing video for the podcast just because it really prolongs my process in you know dropping episodes like you got to make sure the video is good you're uploading it, you're promoting it like it's just so many pieces that I thought was doing the most but I'm starting to integrate it a little bit more and I'm hoping that eventually I will start to be able to do the Who's That Girl episodes in person and have really intimate conversations with the girlies through the camera and you guys can watch like hour long length episodes on my channel. Who I've always wanted to be once I left campus was an inspiration and a reminder to everyone that what you dream can become your reality and my biggest dream has always been to scale and grow and become a talk show host. I became the host of That Girl Radio and I have prayed night after night to somehow, some way, have a platform large enough that I speak to women around the world. And it happened. It happened overnight. We have listeners in over 186 countries and well over 100,000 downloads. But for some reason, I want something bigger. And to know me is to know I'm, I've always been a very creative individual. 
I've always been someone who is extremely meticulous about my craft and every project I touch, I put 1000% into it. Working with Bobby and Madison was the solidification for me that my gifts are much larger than I am and they're meant to be touched and received by millions. They tapped into me asking me to creative direct and build a brand identity for their student government campaign. And I took on a much larger role than I anticipated. I became the photographer, the videographer, the creative director, the stylist, and so much more for this project. But I was able to create something that is going to create lasting impact on our campus for many years to come. My goal with every creative project I work on is to become the inspiration for another creative project that someone works on along the way. <laughs> Wanna see? Yes. My mom's very excited for this. It's, it's, uh, it's big. Oh, Ricky! It's, it's, it's big, Kyla! They, <laughs> they look so good. They look so good. Oh my good. god! Instagram looking like, oh my god, look what Ricky posts on my brother. I'm just saying, you can, you, can her, really, you can really get into taking corporate headshots for like Seriously. some black people. After working on this project, I really felt like I wanted to lean into furthering my education and really sharpening my skills as a creative director and a strategist. And the way to do that was to go to the brand center. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am great. Um, so you were an intern last summer. Mm -hmm. I worked on Olaplex, Smirnoff for a hot second, um, the New York Times, and Ciroc. I want to hear a bit about you and ask you a few questions before I really get into the weeds of brand centers. So why don't you tell me where you're at and um, what got you here? So I'm a graduating senior at Ohio State. I study business marketing with minors in professional writing and entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, over the course of my college career, I've been immersing myself in lots of organizations, working as like their um, brand, like the marketing chair. And in that, I helped co-found the organization and like really build what they look like. And even before I did that, Back in high school, like my junior year, I was a brand manager for a nonprofit, and that really just sparked my interest for brand identity, for social media, and a plethora of other things. Um, so from my junior year, me being 16, all the way up until 21, I've been a social media manager. I've built and designed um, and worked with like over 25 clients, got into build like my own platform and understanding and managing like your own brand and the ebbs and flows of that across social media platforms. I built out a successful podcast, so there's like been a lot of building things and through and through I found that I've gained a lot of skill sets along the way. I can do graphic design, I can do photography, I can do videography, but nothing makes me more happy than being on the strategic side of things and being able to use both my left and my right brain, um, looking at the data or doing focus groups and interviews and understanding the why so that then we can come to a like so what. Um, and since my internship last summer, I found myself like particularly interested in the strategy space. So that's pretty much where I'm at now. I have three options post-grad. I can go full-fledged into entrepreneurship and work for myself, work with clients and do that. But in that, that takes away my ability to focus solely on the strategy. I have to like worry about client acquisition and so many other things. Or I can like work for another firm and go straight into strategy and skip grad school. Or I can go to grad school and learn a bit more and get my master's. Strategy can be a discipline that's hard to break into and they want sometimes want to start you out with client management or brand management or um, even like on the creative side before like earning the level up into strategy, especially within creative agencies. And like I said, I think that's changing a bit um, but the one of the main reasons I wanted to go to grad school straight out of undergrad is to fast track right into strategy because I knew exactly where I wanted to be. A lot of people go in there with the intention to work at creative agencies 
or um, in-house. We were introduced to Sylvain and a few other consultancies. And I think also this was during the pandemic. We graduated in 21. So we saw consultancies having a little bit more security. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Oh my god. I'm so scared. <laughs> okay. It says view decision letters. idea how excited and how much of a relief this is to know what their decision was and I'm going to read it to you guys. It says, Dear Ricky Lee, it is my pleasure to inform you of your acceptance to the Brand Center Strategy Graduate Program for Fall 2024. Your admission to our selective graduate program is evidence of your excellent achievements and your exceptional potential. We have enjoyed getting to know you through the admissions process and are eager to see the amazing ideas you have, the work you create, and the person you become. The Brand Center is a collaborative, creating learning environment brimming with the best of the creative industries. It's a training ground for brand innovators. Your classmates, a diverse group of talented individuals, will teach you as much as your professors. Our vast network of alums will support and mentor you both during your 60 weeks at the Brand Center and throughout your career. We are excited to welcome you to the class of 2026. If you have not yet applied for scholarships and would like to be considered, please submit the scholarship application by March 17th. <sighs> Now we have to FaceTime my mom. We have to FaceTime my mom. And we have to FaceTime my mama. FaceTime my mama. About how I'm still trying to figure out like what's next, what's coming. And I applied to a job. And this literally just made my day. I literally slept two hours last night. I'm running off of fumes. But this, this is the exact news. Mommy, guess what? what? I got in. And tell me everything. I got in. I'm trying to send you the 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 acceptance letter, but I got in. Were you counting? No, but I was kind of scared. Ricky, do you understand? You're brilliant. I do, but. You never know who you're up against. It doesn't matter who you're up against. You shine brighter than most people. Sweetie, when are you gonna start believing that? Oh, I don't know. I'm like, you're like freaking your out. Mama. You're like your mama, honey. You walk into a room and people notice. Mm -hmm. And your hard work is a bonus. <sighs> Okay, so, so what are they saying? Tell me what's going on. What are they saying? So I got in, but they don't, they won't send the, the scholarship considerations until April because they're still taking applications for the scholarship consideration until March 17th. So right now I have my decision that like I'm accepted into the program, but I have to wait to see like what the scholarship offering will be. Finished my tour of the school and I am totally in awe of what this facility has for students. I am going to be on a panel with Councilman Shayla Favor and we are going to be talking about some amazing topics with some young women for this event at the Femergy Center. So I'm really, really excited about that. I have been 
booking a lot of speaking engagements this year and it's just really exciting and I am just soaking all of God's favor in because it's just it feels so unreal but I literally just packed up my makeup essentials today in my little bag I'm just rolling with it I am currently using my rearview mirror as my mirror and she's actually working pretty lovely my internship until 3 p.m. today and then at 3 30 we have my panel for both of those things I'm literally in love with my outfit today guys like I think this is arguably my favorite corporate America look that I have put together but how's everyone doing what's going on with the girlies how is life how is life treating you guys life has been lifing for me I am so excited I got invited on a brand trip guys so we have a brand trip to prepare for and so last night I took the liberty of perusing on Shein and shopped for about five hours trying to put together the perfect outfits and of course you know I had to put my Canva to use I was taking screenshots of all these different pieces and trying to visualize them put together shout out to my type A girlies because if you know you know like I need to be able to actually see the pieces together and see if they mix well and obviously when you're like going on vacation and stuff and you're mixing together pieces that are all like a 12 then it's really important to make sure that they're not like clashing with each other because when you have a lot of pieces that are visually busy working together it can start to look a little a mess yeah, I was just trying to make sure I had a general idea of what I'm going to be wearing. But I accidentally freaking pot. But I accidentally bought two carts and had one being sent to one address and one being sent to another. So I had to cancel my order and do it again. And so that was really annoying. But I got it together and now we're all Gucci. This get ready with me is honestly so chaotic. and I've never done a full face in my car before, but this is what my life has come to because I am genuinely just so busy that I don't I didn't have time I literally had to plan this out okay it's starting to come together I need a little mini setting spray I'm realizing that now it's literally 11.07 so I'm doing really good on time because I don't have to be to my internship until 12 which makes me want to stop almost and get myself something to eat makeup is done now all we need to do is do our little lip so we're gonna take some of my sephora collection lip liner and we're gonna take some of my nyx creme brulee butter glass and then i'm just going to take a little bit of this here sephora collection gloss it was curled a little bit more this morning but it seems as though it doesn't really care about what i want And I used to have oil in here, guys. I don't see the oil, but we got to put on the hand cream and stuff. I currently have on my Crocs because I went to my appointments this morning, but I bought um, or I brought my J-Lo gold heels to wear with my outfit because I have on my Black Kate Spade bag as well as my little cream trench. And then I have on this midi skirt. And I feel like when you wear midi skirts in order to elevate the look, it's just... It's almost imperative that you put on some heels so we are about to head out now that my makeup is beat it only took 15 minutes and now we are going to head to my internship hi can I please have your pick two with a regular turkey sandwich but not the country mustard instead the sauce from the turkey bacon Bravo sandwich and then can I add a pickle and I would also like a green smoothie. Alrighty, anything else for you today? Nope, that's it. Of course, I'll have that ready at the window. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Guys, we did the makeup, now we're getting lunch. I am like, I don't know who I am right now. I'm on time, I'm early, I've been on relatively on time for everything today. Uh, it's 11.30, my job is about 15 minutes from here. And then we have a lot of work to do today. I have to actually put together 
the graphic templates for their conference. The entirety of this internship, I have been working with them on photography, branding, as well as the social media packaging and their rollout for their conference. It is a business conference that they are hosting here in Columbus, Ohio. So for those of you who watch me and that still will be in Columbus around that time, it's a great event to attend. But I've pretty much done the hard work of project managing. I've put together a itinerary. I've also started to frame out what the website will look like. I think I vlogged lastly, last week um, what happened and the touch base that we had for that. And it was just really just me going through. I had a whiteboard. I put everything on it. And I showed them all of the pieces of successful landing pages for conferences look like. What components are there. What components they wanted to emulate and then put like a beauty boost spin on it. So that was a very helpful um, session and that is my biggest tip to creatives for those of you who have clients or you're working with a team of people who are also creative and they don't know what they do and don't like the best thing you can do is just pull a bunch of examples of ways in which you can do it and then have them specifically tell you what elements they like and what they don't like and put it all in a whiteboard space so you can drag everything around and you can just type up what call out so they like what inspires them like and you have a record of that as well so thank you thank you have a good one so if they question your creative if they question your strategy you can point directly back to the whiteboard um session that you all did and say okay these were the things that you said you liked and these were the things that you said you didn't like and that's how you save your butt because you say okay this is the direction we said that we were going to go into so now that we have to do extra revisions this costs more and you know this is what you told me what you wanted and obviously this isn't what you want so we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and that's gonna take more time and more time costs more money so for any of my aspiring entrepreneurs or creatives out there always protect yourself and don't let these people run you dry and have you doing 19,000 iterations of one graphic or one flyer because that's just that's not okay and trust me I'm telling you this because I've experienced it okay I've been there I've gone back and forth with people for weeks on graphics and direction and strategy and it just at that point you aren't even breaking even because you're spending so much time with this client going back and forth when you could be spending that time reaching out to new people and acquiring new acquiring new money so protect yourself at all costs but I want to give you guys a word of the day and that is embrace your starter pack when i was watching this lady's tiktok and she was talking about how it, there's like this meme series where they talk about all the different people in the bible and their starter pack and like for example abraham and sarah were told they were going to birth many nations and the starter pack was sarah couldn't bear a child for example daniel and the freaking goliath his starter pack was a little slingshot and he's supposed to fight this big giant and so I want you to know that just because your starter pack feels like it is not equipped with all of the things that you see all the other people thriving in your dream role thriving in your dream life having just because your starter pack doesn't look like theirs doesn't mean that you can't attain the same thing that's when you know God stepped in that's when you know God was in the midst of all of what is working for you because your starter pack is barren. Your starter pack is really starter packing and you don't have anything that you need, but at the same time, you have all that you need. Allow him, ooh, not the shaking, not the shaking the table, but really, I mean it. Allow him to use you. Allow him to use what you're lacking. And allow him to use what you do have. And perform a miracle. Stop waiting to have all of the things that you think you need to be that girl. Because baby, you already hurt.
2 in the morning. So it's technically March 2nd, but we're going to do March 1st. It says overcoming. Okay, so you guys ready? Regret and dread go hand in hand, and they are both rooted in fear. Regrets cause you to fear the consequences of past mistakes, and dreads cause you to fear the consequences of future mishaps. Both assume the worst. Neither is from God. It's a freeing revelation to know that God offers us victory in the midst of difficulty. We are going to make mistakes, but God can redeem them and even use them to educate us for the future. If you're afraid of your past or afraid of your future, you'll be frozen in a dysfunctional present. There is only one resolution, and it comes straight from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on Him, for He cares for you. Cast those cares off of your life and never pick them up again. Today's thought. Your mistakes are not greater than God's mercy. All things are possible with God. And that was so timely because there are so many things that I am dreading and that I'm also really anxious about because obviously the future is unknown. But there are a lot of things that I have been thinking about as far as my college experience that I've been regretting, as far as like me living in this apartment that I've been regretting, like me not taking up all the opportunities to just be grateful that I'm even in this space because who knows what's to come next. And it's just put me in such a dysfunctional present because I want to bask in all of the amazingness that is of me still being in school, me still getting my degree, me being a college student. But I'm also dreading my future and trying to get a grasp and a hold on like what that the next step is going to be. And because I don't know what's next, it's been like driving me crazy. Choosing your plan A is a complete exercise of faith. And choosing not to even employ a plan B is an exercise of faith. And I feel like I've been in such a dysfunctional space for the past few months because I've been trying to put eggs in every basket. I have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I feel like as a believer, I'm showing God that I, I don't have faith because I'm trying to line up so many best case scenarios if something doesn't work out. And so in my quiet time with God today, I just reminded myself that, you know, I can cast all my fears and my worries aside onto him and just do the work. As long as I do that day after day after day, he will align me with what is exactly for me. So for anybody who is in a transitional period in your life right now where you're dreading your past and fearful about the future, cast all of your worries aside and just trust in God and know that he will order your steps. and what is next and what's ahead is like so bright and beautiful and it's better than anything you could ever imagine and so it's really hard to be in that type of space like trusting right of like what's next but i feel like it's gonna be good for you and also for me okay right now i'm getting myself together for graduation my hair is wrapped up and i'm gonna do like some soft curls because it's kind of rainy out and it's honestly super rainy out but you already know we got to look glossy and the bomb so i'm using my sol de janeiro body butter in the purple one this one is tea we're going to use this because it's very thick and it's going to keep me hydrated and then my second key ingredient is this stuff this is so good this is the kyoko dry body oil this is in milk and honey and it literally smells so good i'm just gonna take a bit of that I'm actually running low on it i need to pick up some more but i got this from jc at the top of the year in january i got this robe and this is arguably my most favorite robe it is actually absorbent it's like a towel so when i put it on straight out of the shower and my body's still kind of wet i don't have to worry about feeling icky now I need my makeup to last today and I need my makeup to make up. I need it to actually look like I'm wearing makeup and I feel like I really struggle to do that because I 
on a regular day-to-day -day basis. I like to keep my makeup relatively natural. So, starting to do the makeup. My brush with my setting spray. Let's see what that does. And you can get a really natural finish by looking, by using a lot of makeup. You just have to do it right. Now, I'm so sad because my favorite concealer that gets me that flawless finish. I was going to go buy some more, but I didn't have time. But I'm running out of this and this is what makes my makeup. Bomb. And then now we're going to take this like really light concealer. I'm doing good on timing. It's currently 12.14, so. And I made sure to wash my concealer brush that I normally use to blend all of this out because it was filthy. And I really feel like that's what was causing my makeup to look really bad lately by wash my foundation brush as well as my concealer brush that i normally blend out everything with and now it looks 10 times better so shout out to that move hello hey chocolate how you doing i'm good how are you i'm great i'm here at your apartment uh which where do i park or which one is your you can number? You can park in the um, front on the street or you can park in the future resident parking. It's like one spot for that. I just saw that. What's the, okay, what's your apartment number? It's been so long since I've like driven a long time. And I was like, Jesus, am I getting sleepy? <laughs> I know, and it's just one straight road. It, it never changes too, so that makes it even worse. Right, and then all in rain, I was like, oh my God. Lord. Was it raining hard? It was, and then it would stop, and then it was inter uh, uh, intermittent, you know what I mean? Like one minute it was cool, you know, 10, 15 minutes of no rain, then pour down, then, you know, it would start back and forth. Oh so, gosh. She was like in grab, because I had this uh, little, these salads. Um, okay. okay. Hello. Happy graduation day to Rio. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. I'm excited. Yay, what are you doing? I'm currently uh, getting ready. And I was just wondering if you have plans to come to actual black grad or just the graduation party. I will be at both. Okay, perfect. My family is gonna be there around like two thirty. Okay. Um, they should have what like. I've been planning to get there. Okay, perfect. And they should have little signs. My mom said she was gonna do her best to find people that she think is gonna be there for me, but I just wanted to make sure, just in case she didn't see you, that you know that they'll be there. Okay, I'll be looking for your mom because I'm coming for you. Okay, that's perfect. It, and that's all she wrote. Period. Hello. Hello. Hey, friend. I'm good. How are you? Good. Happy graduation day. Thank you. I have literally been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And I was like, I don't want to just text her back. I want to call her. Thank you so, oh, much, sure so, so much. much. Oh, my God. Wait, your sister's coming with you, too? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy. Oh, God. We can't wait to see you. I just want to give you a heads up because I didn't know. Oh, girl. Like taking note of who, how many people are coming or anything. No, the more the merrier. And I have not seen her in so long. So, yeah. You both are so welcome. Um, are you coming to. Yeah, you're coming to the festivities later, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. We are, we are home now. We're in Kentucky. We're going to start getting dressed and then we're going to get on the road with you in a little while. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure I'm giving calls to everybody to make sure they have instructions on how to get everywhere. Yes, ma'am. I saw it's parking on the street and then there's also a parking garage, right? Yes, so there's a parking garage in the building next door. So it's not attached to my apartment building, but there okay. is parking over there. Well, I can't wait to see you. Please travel safely and let me know once you're here. 
jumped off the porch several times and taken extremely large leaps at a very young age. And now that what I felt like was a false safety net for me, which was like school and getting behind different orgs and like just investing so much in everyone else is forcing me into truly looking myself in the mirror and saying like, what do you really want? And it's hard. It's very difficult. I am someone who chronically stretches myself thin and I'm finding that I'm going to have a lot of extra time on my hands to devote to something. And a lot of the time I have devoted myself to other people's businesses, to executive boards that I've been on, or to just some passion project. But now I truly have to like stop being a busybody and be intentional about what steps I want to take in my life. And it's really hard. I have spent nearly every week crying because I'm just nervous I'm scared of being a failure and being a flop and like this being the peak of my life which I know it's not I know it's only gonna get better from here but it's like this inner critic and this inner imposter syndrome that makes me feel like I can't completely jump off the porch and dive into all things Ricky Lee and it's a struggle but I'm coping with my word I'm coping with my community I'm coping by failing forward and trying. I'm trying really hard for that girl radio. I'm trying really hard for my content. I'm trying really hard for my business. And as so long as I'm pushing forward and I'm putting one foot in front of the other, I feel like I will be fine. I feel like God has continuously been closing doors for me in a very scary way. Cause I feel like failure is like chasing after me and I'm just like, trying to hurry up and get through a door so I'm like failure doesn't catch up to me but every opportunity that's good isn't a God thing you know like every good thing is not for me and so I'm having to discern through the good things what actually is my God thing and what's my next step and many of you may be in the same season and my words of advice would be to ask God for discernment and ask him to reveal in his timing what is for you. And I feel like I've been praying that prayer and he's just been shutting door after door after door after door for opportunities and things that are what I thought was really in alignment. And the title is there, you know, the pay is there, but he's like, that's not what I want you to do. I don't want you to do it for them. I want you to do it for you. Um, you're more than capable. You've done it time and time again. It's time to take that leap of faith. And I think when it is extremely unorthodox and it seems like there's no other way that you could do it, but if you did it with God, then that's the thing you probably should be doing. I could do the salary job without God. You know, I could do grad school without God. But to leap out on faith and scale my business, I need God for that. And that's the one thing that I've been extremely scared to do because it's going to take some miracles. But I think that's what he's telling me to do. And I'm scared. So I'm coping, but I'm moving. Be blessings falling in my lap. I came up, give it all I had. Rev my city, put them on my back. Hit my shots, I'm in stone. Straight up, I'ma let them know I don't fall. Make it look easy and they know. There's only one way for us to go Can't hold me back, I'm going way up Tell them they can never play us, no Ain't no stopping me now, no
Ain't no stopping me now, no. Ain't no stopping me, ain't no stopping me, ain't no stopping me now, no. Yeah.